This is the Digging Deeper podcast, where we engage in today's questions from a Christian perspective. Hello, everyone. I'm here with the director of Southern Evangelical Seminary's Philosophy and Theology PhD program, Dr. Brian Huffling. Cool. Well, let's. I think let's just jump in. So, we're. What is religion? What? How would you answer that? What is religion? So I used to teach a class on that, and it is notoriously hard to define because not all religions have the same component. So, for example, uh, some religions or most religions have have a deity, right, like a god. But then you've got religions like Confucianism or Buddhism that really don't have a deity. And so, do they count as religion? Mm. Um, if you open up, if I were to pull my books off the shelf and 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 open up to to the table of contents for you know, all the different religions around the world, you'd see Confucianism and, and Buddhism. They don't have a god. Um, so a, a broad definition that, that I used to use in my textbook was basically, um, and this, I know there's going to be some weaknesses of this definition, but basically it is um, some kind of an acknowledgement of something transcendent that is um, holy or other than us, unless you're a pantheist, which again, all this depends on your, your worldview. Uh, something that you're trying to go after that transcends you or or uh, some kind of transcendence that you're trying to get after. And and normally that'll that'll have a moral component. Oftentimes, but not always, it'll have a life after death component. Uh, scripture, maybe that kind of thing. But normally religion has to do with your uh, trying to attain something that is more than yourself and, and more transcendent. But that definition is prob- problematic because it's too broad and vague because you know uh, football and in some instances these definitions could fit some of these mm. you know just fit some of this so it just depends so you want do we want to make deity a necessary requirement for mm. can, for religion or not um, but in general religion is is a, a practice or a lifestyle that people have uh, to follow after uh, some kind of transcendent holy being in a, in a general sense okay <laughs> Yeah. Not too broad. Hmm. Yeah, that that is that's tough to define. Do you think <laughs> do you think could you argue that maybe everyone is religious? If you if you want to maintain on a some because some people want to maintain that even atheists are religious. Um and, and again, it just depends on your, your definition of religion. Mm-hmm. Um, we all have views of God and and meaning and you know where we're going as humans, where we came from, the meaning or whatever of life, uh, morality. So, if those are necessary components for religion, then one might be able to argue that an atheist is religious. And some people do, mm-hmm. uh, because they have things that are somewhat in common with religion, uh, and, and how they practice or where it depends on the atheist too. So, an atheist, I mean, a, an argument could be made for that. Although a counter argument probably be made for the opposite side too. It just depends on how you want to define it. Yeah, and it starts to be a useless word then if it's like <laughs> it can be if everybody's super, you know. So I guess yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. That makes sense. I have heard that though. People say atheists are religious because they have a stance on God, and therefore it's. But it, again, that's what is the practical use of a definition? Yeah. I, for a practical purpose, I would probably say they're not religious unless they just exhibit some kind of characteristics that. Uh, are necessary for religion, but it would still be probably too different to maintain that they're in the same sense that we are religious. Yeah. Okay. And so you, you have a PhD in philosophy of religion. Right. And so what did your study of religion look like? In the PhD program or? Well, overall, because yeah, I know you've, you've studied more than just in the PhD. Like I know, well, what were, what were your previous degrees and in, in so I have like- a, a BA in history from Lee University, and I triple majored my master's program with uh, uh, Southern Evangelical Seminary in uh, apologetics, biblical studies, and philosophy. Triple crown. Um, just got a master's degree with the Air Force uh, in a totally different area. So I'm glad okay, I had nice. that done. And then the PhD was in philosophy of religion, and so uh, the study of religion mostly has been Christian. Uh, for the most part, but when you start looking at philosophy of religion, it's going to normally be broader than just Christian. It typically, though, is Western. Uh, if you're studying in, in Europe or the U.S., you're going to more often than not study um, Western, like arguments for God's existence and what is God like? Does he change? Is he in time? Uh, is he made up of various parts? Do we affect him in some way? Mm-hmm. And those are more on the on the quote-unquote generic theistic level. 
but certainly some classes, uh, even in that field or some areas in that field, will be inherently Christian, like to try to d- look at the Trinity, incarnation, the nature of petitionary prayer, uh, inspiration, all from a philosophical point of view. Mm. So it just really depends on exactly what we're what we're looking at. Okay, gotcha. So so you focus on Christianity, but also just Western religions, and it's kind of all grouped in. It's more zoomed back than just right. We read the Bible, and so it's it's a more broad study. Right. So what um, I've heard often and just regularly over the course of my life and um, just the idea that religions are the same, or especially if you look at like, you know, religions that came from similar places, like if you look at Islam and Judaism and Christianity and, you know, um, like what, what are some similarities? Like where, why, why do people feel that way? Cause I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of truth in that, right? It's like, these are very similar and there's striking, you know, these names and these characters exist in all three. And yet these three are, you know, if you asked, I think probably anyone from a devout follower of any of these, they'd probably be like, no, this is different. Obviously, because by nature, they're saying <laughs> yeah. I'm a Christian, not, and, you know, practicing Jew or I'm a, you know, um, Islamic, not a Christian. So, right. Yeah. So they all fall into the, the, the great monotheistic religions camp. Uh, and what that means is that, so monotheism is the idea there's one God. So theism comes from the Greek word theos for God. Uh, so theology is, is the study of God. And so it, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all monotheistic in that they worship one God. And there are a lot of similarities between our views of God. Well, even if we were to talk about Christians, we have different views of, of our God. Like, is God in time or not? There's various views on that. But in general, we can talk about... Uh, the the theistic view of God. He's a creator. Uh, traditionally, he seemed to be eternal or non-temporal, non-changeable, immutable, uh, immaterial, infinite, all that. And then there's a question, well, if that's the, the case, then are we just worshiping the same God? Mm-hmm. And and as you said, well, it, it doesn't really seem like it because the, the Christian view of God is, that, is of a trinity. Mm-hmm. And we have the incarnation of Jesus and both Jews and Muslims reject the Trinitarian notion of God. And so I think right there shows that we're not worshiping the exact same God, although we have similarities uh, among those three. Okay. And so I think any Christian and like heavily church followers would have an idea of the Trinity. Could you, and also know that this is a tough question. So what, how would you define the Trinity? Maybe. The Trinity, okay. Um, the Trinity is just, the idea that there's one God, one being, that is expressed in three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're not this, there's a sense in which they're not the same, that the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, and, and so forth. Mm. Uh, and then they don't together, um, when people try to define the Trinity, it's, it, it's real easy to go off into heresy or get off the orthodox trail but one being in three persons is pretty much the the uh the necessary requirements to be trinitarian they're not so some wrong views would be uh you know, like like the, the three links in, in a chain well those are different beings so they don't they don't mm-hmm. meet the one being requirement um same thing with water you know water can be i or it can be a solid liquid and a gas well they can't be all that at the same time that's that's considered modalism like god takes on the mode of the father the mode mm-hmm. of the son the mode of the spirit so that doesn't meet the requirements either it's three separate persons simultaneously making up one being okay now there's gotcha. nothing in our experience to help us make a lot of sense of that and and god is is ultimately going to be um, mysterious and, and infinite, and we're finite, so it's not. We're not going to be able to capture that, but we can try to understand it such that it's not a contradiction. Mm, okay, yeah, gotcha. So the Trinity is a is a distinguishing factor of Christianity versus Islam, right, and right. which I I've heard also people I've you know I think that's a a disputable point from in like. I guess Islam and Judaism perspective of like, well, how can God be, how can we all be in the group under the umbrella of a monotheistic religion? And also you say that there's these three being, you know, Mm -hmm. like I've heard, I've heard that, uh, you know, contention with the idea of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, what, 
so what do you do if you hear someone say, hey, like, I think, you know, all religions are maybe, I don't know if people say that they're the same, but there's at least this idea of there's a lot of overlap. So why don't you guys just get along? Why is there, you know, so much hostility? Why is there even maybe a divide, like to an extreme case, you know, why, like, if you guys all just believe in a God, why do you feel the need to separate yourselves Mm -hmm. from Jews and Islam or believer Christians or, you know, what do you do so, with those So people kind of normally tend to emphasize what's in common uh, and, and don't look at what's not in common. Mm. And, and most people want to give the, the, the impression or the idea that the core of all religions are the same. And I think actually the, that that's been demonstrated to be false, that actually the core of religions are very different. Mm. Uh, so if you look at, for example, uh, Winford Cordwin has a, has a, has a good book. On, on this. Uh, it's called A Tapestry of Faiths. And uh, if you look at that book and you listen to what he has to say, uh, he, he demonstrates, I think, convincingly that, that the core of, of religions are not really the same. They're very different. Mm-hmm. And that's what's, what makes them what they are. Uh, so Christianity teaches, for example, that there's one God, there's one way to salvation. You need salvation. Not all religions teach that, mm-hmm. that we have uh, a sin nature and so forth. Um, and so we have to look at what, what the core is teaching, not simply what the what the tangential agreements are. And once you start mm-hmm. doing that, then the similarities break down pretty quickly. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's fascinating the, because I guess if you think of these different religions and you think it kind of feels like a trunk with different branches, mm-hmm. it feels like we all kind of, or if all three of these, like specifically these three religions have this idea of a one God who is immutable in all these things, but then some people are kind of like, well, there's this and there's that. And so um, how do you, how do, how do we distinguish the difference between a core? Like what is the core of these religions? Is it, you know, is there maybe confusion about what the core of these three ideas is or is it, because I, I feel like isn't, isn't the fact that there's one God, a core idea that like, you might be like, well, that feels pretty big. Yeah. You know, that feels like a pretty big, pretty foundational construct that might be a pillar of this, you know, of the unity of your guys' views. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so not to pick on Oprah or people like that, but when you hear this kind of Oprah gospel uh, that's, that's presented uh, to reflect Christianity, uh, everything really revolves around love. And of course that's important in, in Christianity as well. But then there's the exclusion to, well, we're, we're sinful and we need a savior. And we start adding those kind of things. And again, these, these, what the core is going to be is, is going to be, um, to put it in a fancy phrase, the sine qua non or that without which you don't have the religion. So the core is going to be the things that if you didn't have those, it wouldn't be what it is. Mm. So you, can, you can't have Christianity without sin because Christianity is, is the view that God came to save us from our sin. Mm. You know, um, so a lot, of, a lot of religions don't teach that or, or people who want to, want to make Christianity out to be, well, it's just we all should get along and love each other. Well, that's missing in a, a whole pillar of what Christianity is even about. So we have to understand what what is it that that is being taught that if, if you didn't have that, you just wouldn't have the religion. So there are some fringe things uh, that, that maybe you can you can disagree on, but when it comes to the core, uh, and this, this is part of some of the debates that I, I work in as well, because there's, there's Christians who think, well, if you think God... Uh, changes, and that's not really an infinite, uh, the true God. If you think he changes in his end times, all these debates that we have uh, in philosophy of religion. Um, if you think God is, is, is physical, that's a problem. If you think, um, you know, we don't have sin or we can be saved outside of Christ. These are, these are the core, hmm. some of the core teachings that, that we would want to look at. Yeah, and that that's interesting. I, I like that Latin term you use that I will not try to repeat, but, um, <laughs> I just made it up. <laughs> I was convinced. No, um, no, um, no, I like that makes me think of like, even when Jesus says like, um, the cornerstone, which right. I guess a visual I would, I, I would, and maybe a lot of people would think of is like, all right, well, the quantity of similarities is what makes these all the same. And if there's a small quantity of things that are different, 
by this by this perspective I'm holding, then they're probably pretty much the same and you should mm -hmm. just overlook these small things. But even if you think about Jesus saying, I'm the cornerstone, like it's like, that might not be the biggest stone in the house. Just when you look at it, it might not be the, but it is it is what is standing on. Yeah. And yeah. And as you just mentioned, or, uh, these aren't small differences. I mean, Jesus saying, I am the only way. Yeah. That's a, that's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Absolutely. No, and I think, I think, I think you're right, and I didn't mean to, to no, I, no, I think you made a good point that, that, you know, people want to say there's just small differences. Well, they're not small differences. They're not yeah. major, major yeah. differences. I mean, like, from a distance, it looks it looks like the mm -hmm. same, yeah. Yeah. right? And so that's why the importance of, I guess, just the, the foundational, the core, right. the thing for which without, it's no longer what it was. Right. And with Christianity, that is who Jesus says he is, and then the fact that we're sinful and need jesus so that we can be in relationship with the right. father so what is could you i don't know if how much you studied islam and judaism but could you speak to the core of those religions yeah they're not they're certainly not my my main area but you know the core of, of judaism basically is going to be and it depends on what i guess there's a different denominations or branches of, of, of judaism and they're they're pretty different in terms of how they uh, interpret their their teachings and how they how that is worked out in their everyday life, uh, but Torah the or the and the Tanakh the what we call the Old Testament is going to be central. Mm. Um, th that that religion is more about obedience and, and following after God. It's not about like in Christianity where we have a, a personal relationship with 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 Jesus and our God. It's more like we, we have the law that's set before us to to follow it, uh, and with Islam. Uh, it's to again follow the the teachings of of the Quran as given to them by Muhammad, uh, and there's going to be some variations of of interpretation there as well. But that's going to be the is going to be part of the core. Is going to be you know read the Quran. You have to do the five pillars that you have to do. Mm. Uh, you know becoming a, a Muslim, doing your prayers, doing the uh, the uh, pilgrimage and um, the fasting and and all that. Okay, so it's like saying all three of these things are the same would be like, all right, yeah, Islam minus the five pillars of the Quran and Judaism minus like adherence to the Torah and Christianity minus Jesus is declaring that we need, that he is a, our path to to, who, yeah. to God and, and forgiveness. And so like, yeah, if you, and I think, I don't know, I do think that's what people mean when they say they're similar because I, I don't, I haven't heard anyone be like, well, you know, the Quran and the Torah are kind of the same. Like no one actually talks about that. They're just like, <laughs> yeah. well, these these broad concepts look the same from X far back. This yeah, the far surface. Back. Yeah, and when, mm. as soon as you go below that surface, it's very different. Yeah. Now, what about? And you said you you studied history in your undergrad, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I, again, I, I'm not sure your expertise in this area, but I've also heard people say, well, you know, Christianity came from Judaism, Islam came from Christianity, and I I feel like the average person who heard that would be like, yeah, that's what happened. So actually, yeah, now that you mention it, why do you guys disagree? Because it seems like it's just this linear progression right. or this kind of, you know, at best, just kind of like cousins. Like what is, you know, what's the deal with all this disagreement? Could you could you break that down a little bit? Yeah, so I mean, there is a sense in which it's true that Christianity is, is somewhat of an outgrowth of, of Judaism in the sense that uh, Jesus fulfilled the law, he fulfilled the prophets, uh, but he opened it up to the Gentiles, which which really radicalized the the, the teachings that that the Jews had that they were, mm. and they're still a special people of, of God. But the, this has been opened up to to everyone uh, who who responds. Uh, but Jesus fulfilled the law so that we don't have to keep the the Torah. And if you weren't Jewish, you don't have to do anyway. But you don't you don't have to keep uh, the law. Uh, and, and do all the sacrificial system and, and all that. Mm. And then it's it's somewhat true that Islam has a connection with that because they do teach that there's aspects of what we call the Old and New Testaments that are true. They think a lot of it's false. Mm. Uh, like they don't think Jesus, first of all, ever died, let alone raised, was raised from the dead. Mm. Uh, so they they, have, they attach onto some things that are taught uh, in the in both testaments, but they deny what's incredibly, you know, again, the sine qua non, the, the deity of Jesus. You can't reject the, uh, the, the death of Jesus and, and be similar. I mean, so one religion teaches Jesus died, one teaches that he didn't. 
Mm. Uh, one teaches he was God, and the only way to salvation, and one teaches that he's not. Or those are just radically different. Yeah. Um, it would be like saying something like, well, capitalists and socialists both have a view of money, so they're the same. Well, that's, they're mm. radically different. So they, 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 just because they, they have views of the same uh, material objects that they're studying, that mm. their interpretation and, and overall views of them are going to be so different that they're, they can't be the same position. Yeah, yeah, that's if that makes any sense. (laughs) Yeah, no, it does. Did um, so what? I so if um, Islam doesn't teach that Jesus died, is it? What do they teach that Jesus happened to Jesus? Then I'm actually not really familiar with. Well, they they teach that uh, that God basically took Jesus. It's really Mm. weird because Muslims believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, performed miracles, lived a Mm. sinless life, and never died. Mm. Muhammad, for whatever, didn't do any of that. So until you get into the Hadith, you start seeing miracles. There's no miracles in the Quran. Um, so there's a kind of a higher view of Jesus in the Quran than there is of Muhammad, ironically, and, mm. and a higher view in the Quran of Jesus than liberal Christian scholars, mm. which is kind of funny. So he, they, and there's, some, there's some dispute about that, but some people think he was replaced with, with Judas, or uh, uh, I think Simon of Cyrene was one possibility maybe not judas uh but he was replaced by somebody and it would made it made to appear that jesus was killed but okay. he wasn't gotcha okay gotcha thanks for breaking that down I, sure. I think i might have heard that but i yeah yeah and that's a pretty pretty big distinction if you yeah. if you look close enough at what these two things these or these three belief systems are at their core so what what do we do with that and what what do we do with the fact that these are these three of like the biggest worldviews, religions vying for power and vying for not power might not be the best word, but also well, somewhere, sometimes yeah. is a good word <laughs> mm-hmm. um, vying for this claim on what reality is. What do we, what do we do with the, the differences? Like how do, you know, and maybe, I don't know, as, as Christians, even like, if you're like, all right, well, this is different. How do we, what's the responsibility with that? You know, distinction if i'm following your question I, I think that our responsibility is to figure out to the best that we can you know which one of these religions is true and then try to seek after truth um, we as, as rational human beings naturally as aristotle says we we want we have a a natural inclination and desire and curiosity for the truth mm. and so you know, people don't always associate truth with religion. When I used to have my class in my in the secular school, I would ask them, if you're comfortable, tell me what religion you hold to and why. And almost no one, even the Christians, said anything about it being true. It was all about being practical or they liked it. Mm. We have a responsibility as rational beings to follow what's true. And so if you see these differences between all these religions, you have to ask, okay, well, per non, the you know, law of non-contradiction and all that, these can't be, you know, Jesus can't have died and not died, one or the other. So I think our responsibility is to is to try to investigate and figure out which of these religions are true, and then when we can discover that, then go after it with all that we have. And is that tracking your question? I'm not sure yeah. if I'm following you. That's better. No, okay. I, if I had asked the question better, that would have been the perfect answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what what are some means? to determining these true because I mean, even if we just and you could you could open this conversation up to other religions to maybe none of these are true but mm-hmm. even if we just focus on these three and i you know even just statistically the amount of people that believe one of these three things and they believe that with all of their being so what what are the tools for parsing through what's true and what is like what's not true yeah that's exactly what i was interested in when i was um especially in college in a senior year. So I was a history major, and I was thinking, okay, what can we do? I don't really want to teach at this time because I want to, I want to, I don't know, I just want to, I want to get, I don't want to uh, be poor my whole life, so I don't want to just be a history <laughs> teacher, not that you're always poor in that regard. I mean, I'm a teacher now. Um, so I thought, well, law school likes history, but I, I couldn't shake this idea or this desire to figure out, okay, I believe Christianity is true, but I really can't defend it or tell you why. Mm. And so I, I did the at our school the, the famous M.A. Google search for Christian apologetics. Uh, if you don't know what Christian apolo- what apologetics is, it's just you know, trying to, to defend a position or uh, provide a rational account for it. And so one of the best schools that I found for it, when I work there now, um, 
full disclosure, is Southern Evangelical Seminary. Uh, and so, depending on how, how much you're wanting to, you can certainly go to school, you can get a, a, a certificate, you can get a degree, you can just read books, you can listen to uh, podcasts, you can go to our conference, the conference that you're putting on here coming mm-hmm. up. That's a great way to learn. Um, figure out who's teaching on these topics. Uh, follow their, their blogs, their podcasts, read their books. Enroll in school if, you're, if you, you know, really want to get in the deep end. Uh, and figure out what people are saying and, and, and what and what they teach, what religions teach. Re- read the primary sources, read mm-hmm. the Bible. You read the Bible, you got Judaism and Christianity. Uh, and then if you want to learn about Islam, read the Quran and um, just figure out you know how you want to go about it, whether it's listening in your car on the way to work or listening on your on your computer at home or whatever and, and just trying to figure out the best people on these topics uh, and see what they have to say. Yeah, so is it is it a matter of primary documents? Is it is it a balance between primary documents and perspective and, and even philosophy and and what you know what is what have you found to be the convincing and compelling mix of primary documents, historical, philosophical arguments, you know, scientific mm-hmm. re- arguments, reason, you know, what, what, what have you found to be the combination that you're like, and I am absolutely 100% certain, or just I've been certain, here's my articulation of that certainty. Okay. Yeah, so as a classical apologist and philosopher, we bring in everything as opposed to some other schools of thought that really don't want to get into philosophy uh, a school of thought today called presuppositionalism. They really don't want to go there. Um, but we think, you know, God has made us rational creatures, so we, we worship him with our reason. We investigate with our reason. Uh, but we do, as you say, want to look at the primary source. We don't want to say, well, well, Huffling says this is what Christianity is. Well, then go to the Bible and see if, if it really says that. Mm. So you want to read the primary sources. Uh, but you also want to look at the secondary sources because they're going to help explain things like commentaries, um, theologies or just books and that, and that, that kind of thing. But it's important to go to the primary sources to get it from the horse's mouth. Mm. Um, of course, if it's true, if the if a religion is true, it really shouldn't contradict anything, whether it be science, history, archaeology, uh, a good philosophy. You know, we can differ on what philosophy is true or not, but it shouldn't, if something's true, it shouldn't contradict um other areas that we know are also true. Mm-hmm. Now, what would you do with experience in that in that realm? Because I think there's a love hate relationship with mm-hmm. relying on experience. Because yeah. we, you know, we realize I think we all realize that it's not fully reliable because it's our perception of what happened. But at the same time, we also I think when we're honest, we're like I cannot separate my experience, my my upbringing, my the people around me, what I've heard all my life, you know, and I think. Honestly, in, in in a cynical way, there can be this almost hopelessness of like, well, you you know, you just have heard that your whole life, and that's why you believe it, or you mm-hmm. just you know haven't explored fully, or you just this one coincidence happened, and you were like, and you it was an emotional experience, and you you know bought in. What do you is experience something to dismiss? Is this something to fully lean on? Well, you know. What are your thoughts on That's that? That's a great question. I've, so I, I've been in some Pentecostal circles, which are much heavier on the experience than, than I would be now. Um, and I've also seen other people in various religions have an emotional, uh, well, get emotional, have a, almost a breakdown. And we can talk about all kinds of people having experience. They have an experience of, so for example, um, I mentioned I was getting a, a master's degree with the Air Force. My, my research project was basically on UFOs. Uh, aliens and, and uh, well, not aliens as much, but uh, national security. So one area, one area though, with a UFO experience is people have these experiences and they think they're aliens. Well, I think there's a really good argument to show they're really not aliens. They're actually probably uh, demonic spirits that are making you think mm-hmm. they're aliens. We had this experience, so we can we can have an experience of something and it and it be wrong. And so it's it's hard to say you want to dismiss it outright. But we also don't want to bank our, you know, everything we think about it, and our certainly our our uh, eternal destination on a, a feeling that we have. Mm. Um, and so there are a lot of people, and I, and I go as far as to say, you know, a lot of times today people say, "Well, I feel God calling me to do this," or "I feel led to do this." I think we need to be careful with that too, because first, the Bible doesn't ever say that that we're supposed to feel 
something like that. And I think that we have put a lot of emphasis on these kinds of experiential aspects that uh, are, are they can be dangerous because there's no way to know if it's just an emotional experience. The, the AC came on, hit me, and got, I've got goosebumps. Is that the Holy Spirit? I, you know, you got to be careful with that. Mm. Um, but there's people I, I really trust and look up to as um, fathers in the faith, as it were, in my life, who have had experiences that I have no way of explaining mm. um, and think that, well, we have to just, I don't hold that exact view maybe that they hold to but but they've had this experience so how do you explain it mm. we have to figure out if you're having experience does it is it in accordance or does it contradict with scripture mm. and what we know to be true already thanks for listening to hear more from dr brian huffling join us at digdeeperdc.com <laughs>